the good good the good part about Doxy in terms of AoE, he, he with a vacuum, right? He has so much AoE setup for Queen of Pain as well as Gyrocopter. Mm. So that the five on five is is crazy. Well, this kind of ticks her boxes. Yep, it ticks all of them. Yeah, max movement speed, mm -hmm. physical damage, physical damage, tanky, kind of everything we needed to see, right? Hey. So that being said, who do we think is the, who's, what's the key matchup here? If the two roles, all the roles are matched up against each other, what do you think is most important in this match? I think IX Mike has to perform. I think he's one of the players that has a lot of question marks in terms of his individual skill, but this is a guy that's played a two TIs. Like he's not, he didn't just get there by luck, right? Like he worked hard for it, but at the same time, sometimes you'll see some inconsistency by him, but we, he's on, he mm. plays really well and he can be the difference maker for wheel, I feel. Yeah. He seems to me like a very calm person. I personally, I mean, I haven't played with him, but I speak like I, I spoke to him, and I feel like he's this kind of person that keeps a good vibe in a team. So, you know, sure you might have questions towards his individual play, but I feel like he also gives a good vibe to towards the team, which is a positive attribute as well. Yeah. Not in the NEL game that I've experienced <laughs> with them, but it's entirely different, right? When, you, when, you, when you're obviously in a team, it's, it's a very different setting. It just kind of made me laugh thinking about all the situations I've been with Mike. When it matters. Spamming out we lost and, you know, with the E starting before the W and a couple of U's working in there somehow. All right, so here's our game. Wheel. Wreck while whistling. Facing up against North American Rejects, version number two. Wheel being able to take game one in a surprising upset, but can they continue this and make it a clean 2 0? We're going to see IX Mike starting off with the early rotation out, getting the ward to uh, place down to be able to give him some vision of the rotations. As uh, our analyst pointed out, it's a little bit scary for for uh, a clockwork. Right, right. Just because <laughs> the gyrocopter is such Mike's a Mike's being super safe here. Yeah. He might try right now. He's got that one sin he wants to throw down, but. He's being really smart here because he realizes that the first motion is usually through that area, and if he waits out, he might be okay now. He's just going to go back and get his creep block off. All right. The wheel, meanwhile, they've got their four men up here in the top room. Looks like they are just going to be making a trade off of runes. No real big contest coming out either way. So, judging by just how the laning phase is going to go, the clockwork gets a little bit dangerous because you're facing up against um, a gyrocopter. Mm hmm just the extra damage there but clockwork especially on a dire side always has something he can do right with cogs blocking especially what ike's mike's going to do right here where he you know kills that one cog puts the creeps into the side wave that's going to be a huge advantage he should still get something same kind of goes for the darks here it's dangerous against a, a rubik because he can tell kinesis you to you know take out that search timing right. but it's a darks here he always gets farm right exactly now this is really smart about mike hiding a sentry ward too and a quick little up just to get a little extra health in there. It's yeah, always funny to mana. me what the situations are where you should waste a little bit of mana just to get a couple of extra auto attacks off or not. Mm -hmm. And sometimes yeah. really early, it's worth it. If they, especially if you see that the enemy does not have a lot of regen. That's usually a good situation to do it. But it's kind of a 50-50. It's like if you're Dazzle, it's like, do I spend my poison touch so I can get a couple yeah. of hits in or do I save it for later? And then our middle lane. So we have a Queen of Pain facing up against uh, Alina. We've seen this matchup a number of times. Mm -hmm. Alina, particularly with the increase in range, allows her to be able to harass the Queen of Pain, uh, which is a bit you know, unusual. MSS might be going down here. The right clicks are enough. MSS just underestimating the power of Rubik Ancient Apparition. We said this is a very common support duo, and we see the reason why. Man, Frost here, man, they hurt. Yeah. Do not want to be messing with that ice cream cone. <laughs> yeah, I think this is really going to set the tempo for the rest of the game because they're both playing these heroes that are. I mean, Relic played a fantastic game last last period, and yeah. like Fuck also had a pretty pretty good game. So I think these are kind of the emotional captains of their team. If if, if Quark gets off to a bad start, it's really hard for his team to recover for it, and I think the same thing goes uh, as we have. I need that at 4 a.m. in the morning. That's what I need. I need that smiling. face right there. It's so happy. Scriff, I'm going to give you a hug when it's we're done so with this happy. game, okay? Just just shake your screen up and down if, yeah. if you agree to having a hug. All right. Yeah. There we hug go. On. 
So yeah, I would agree. I like I think so much of it comes down to this middle lane. I like what the Dazzle is already doing, right? Because he's not required Ventral Spirit and and Gyrocopter. They're enough of a threat to the clockwork, and it's not like Dazzle is really going to add anything. So right. him rotating into the middle lane and helping out Korok, who is going to be feeling a lot of harassment between the right clicks and the Dragon Slave. Mm -hmm. uh, that a little bit of extra heal can make uh, a big difference. Exactly, especially since Wheel just got first blood. Now their supports are freed up to rotate around as well. Yeah, so he's kind of preempting that mo that movement by mm -hmm. going ahead and getting there. What's I think, go, no, go ahead, please. I think one of the biggest things, the the wheel when the this is something that you can do with the like it. Now you can technically do it with the gyrocopter. Um, in fact, we've seen um, some players really abuse the radiant side jungle and, and they go like full-time jungle on the gyrocopter but oh, most yeah. of the time gyrocopter doesn't do that whereas lycan it's very standard so this yes. is going to be a big advantage to wield that they can go ahead and utilize that jungle for the lycan full-time and that'll free up the ancient apparition to pick up his level six just you know those kind of things that are going to be able to give you that little bit of an advantage about the 15 minute mark right is this situation are you are you a, a midas on aa kind of guy or no yeah i i think that like midas it? Honestly, when you pick up Ancient Apparition, you should expect him to sit back and, and free farm for like a good 10 minutes. Right. Right. Items so I think really a Midas like, is always legit. Items like Force, I mean, maybe an Urn, but beyond that, there's not a whole lot that, a whole lot that does much for him as a Yeah. Guy. I think it's just so critical for oh, you. Oh, and to the Howl with this too. It's so much damage. Oh, God. Just those two hits, man. It's like, oh. Not oh good. my god, that's <laughs> here. I was just like, you know, kind of laughing, like, oh, look how much damage it was. And all of a sudden, I was just like, he almost dies. Ike's might maybe fall here in the bottom lane. He gets off a little bit of a salve, but it won't make the difference there. As uh, Ush and Frog are still able to run him down underneath the tier one yeah. tower and even up the score. Didn't even need the dazzle. You're right. He's back stacking camps. So, this is going to be quite nice. The Darkseer at that point has something to be able to utilize. Kind of depends on how well his lane goes. Obviously, he's feeling a lot of pressure, so right. necessary for him to be able to farm up some camps, particularly since he still does not have Surge. And that's probably the biggest thing against a Darkseer, right? Make sure he doesn't get his level 2. Right. It's really hard after that for your lanes. I mean, and then level 3. Level 2 Iron Shell hurts a lot. Yeah. Yeah, if you let him get level 3 <laughs> and then a, then a, um, a Soul Ring on top of that, oh, yeah. like... It doesn't matter how much time you spend in lane at that point. He's just going to get a lot of gold yeah. for spamming out uh, ion shells. Life gets real hard. And so, yeah, this is just kind of stack wars going on between these teams. We're making sure, and even they can be stacking this little triangle of camps in the Radiant Jungle as well for the Gyro. And he can farm three of them at once if he, mm -hmm. if he pulls them just correctly. I don't know, this is the kind of stuff TC used to love to do. I know he's playing for Root, not this team here, but the the Razor and Gyrocopter farm where you can do the triple pull yeah. idea. That was that was his thing, man. Every game, if it was possible, he was pulling that off. Notice the smoke that we have on the Vengeful Spirit, so perhaps a, a rotation so that, that may come into the middle lane mm -hmm. um, when Korok is ready. Of course, uh, it, it just goes, it can go either way so easily, right? The Rubik... Yeah, I think is all that's necessary to allow the the Lena to easily get the kill in the Queen of Pain, and right. you know, the same goes with the Vengeful Spirit helping up the Quap against the Lena. So this could e easily go either way, just kind of finding that right rotation. Yeah, and like we said, lots of stacks piling up here, lots of stacks. Nice job by uh, Mike spotting that one out. This is uh, Mike really likes this build, so he goes for the 1-1-2, mm -hmm. and he's going to go back for the Battery Assault. The extra level on Rocket Flare allows you just to be able to get some Assured CS, and uh, the you know the damage is decently nice out of Rocket Flare as well. And you're not really going to... You're not taking away that much of your kill potential. Like right. it, at level seven, when you have level three battery assault and hook shot, it's probably still a kill anyway. There's very rare circumstances where it's like, ah, I wish I had level four battery assault in that situation. Right. I feel like he's going to be moving around to other lanes to be getting this pickoffs anyway. He's not going to be trying to like solo pick off because I mean he can't really solo pick off the quap anyway. Mm -hmm. Iro can be kind of hard because you kind of get caught in with him with rocket barrage, which is it's not what it used to be, but it's about to be level four. Like in two levels, he'll have level four, and it's doing just as much damage as it used to. Yeah. Do. So it's kind of hard for him to go for solo pickoffs unless it's on a support so the stacking up i wonder if they're going to allow the uh, supports to get any of this experience i think mss should really solo it all oh, relic right, though his rune. Uh, looking for this pickoff we'll be able to get the light strike away the pushback with the cogs but they still get it with the flare ike's mike securing that last hit good rotation there from relic man we've seen a lot of good blind like uh, no setup light striker rays i guess it's a lot easier with an invis rune but true <laughs> It has been nice to see. And he's out. well set up to be able to get the six-minute rune as well, which is oh, going to be a haste. Another ganking rune. Yeah. 
Working out really well for Relic. It does have reduced duration now. The direct nerf. Uh, man, the S4, poor S4, the S4 can't nerf. catch a break. He wins TA3, his team gets nerfed. He wins, uh -huh. he wins the summit, his team gets nerfed. What can he do? He's just got to be bad. They just have to keep sandbagging. They have to do what mm -hmm. they did for the month prior. Yeah, you got to play the long con here. Yeah. you gotta, you got to drop TI5 and wait for TI6, yeah. you know? They got invited to ESL, right? They just need to sandbag, like, last mm -hmm. place. They need to oh, yeah. lose out immediately. Yep. All right, so MSS now sitting on about to be level 4, decently close to level 5 after clearing through this stack. So he's getting there. He's getting the farm that he needs. Yeah, it's kind of important now. It's uh, uh oh, no, oh never mind. Nope. Relic. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just comes out of nowhere with the haste rune. One dragon slave. He takes the dark seer plus he takes uh, the rest of that camp yeah. with just one swift move. Look at Wheel Man. They're already up one and one zero, and they're winning this early game quite handily at the moment. Yeah, they really are. I mean, like I was the one who, when we did our like talk at, at, at JD with me, Darka, Toby, and Haas about the like predictions, I was right. like, oh, Wheel. We were good, man. We all could put to provide the upset, <laughs> right? But I still fell back on, okay, I'm going to go for Root in the fourth position, and I can't say no to, you know, NAR, but... Man, Wheeler are, are impressing me. I mean, I, I was trying to support Wheel, but they're impressing even me with their, their play so far. This is, the, this is the play that we were talking about earlier, right? Ancient Apparition now soloing up yep. the top lane and Sleasel full-time jungling. It's so nice that they can do this. Yep. That early level six. I mean, particularly with uh, the Lena, right? I mean, the, the raw nukes are pretty much enough to kill anybody. But if you have an Ice Blast on top, it's guaranteed. Because it's just disgusting. Absolutely anybody you get on. And we'll see the Telekinesis here. And not quite in range. Yeah, Goody trying to make that rotation. A, a little bit surprised. Like, normally it's Derp Derp, who's the very sacrificial hard five support on their team. But uh, maybe he's just a little more comfortable with AA. Yeah. I would say maybe Goody's probably more comfortable with uh, making kind of the the uh, playmaker nah. with uh, the Rubik. I think Goody's actually a, a really good support player. I've heard a lot about Goody for a while. Uh, he's just kind of been the guy that's kind of bounced from team to team, but no one has ever said he lacked for individual talent. Yeah, it's a, it's it's just a little bit difficult for him because I, I believe he's from Venezuela. Yeah, I was about right? to say, I think so, he's South American as well. So it's uh, a little bit difficult. Like, he, he doesn't want to, like, put him... He just... He plays with all the North American players and, you know, tries to get on teams in there. and He's bounced around a bit, but... Ush, chasing away Ix Mike once again. Ix Mike does have his, uh, his level 6, so hook shot ready to go if he wants to make the rotation. Obviously, he would probably prefer to stay in lane, though, and finish up uh, Battery Assault level 3 and 4. Yeah. It's just kind of hard for him to find anything right now, I think. Yeah. And that's, that's a big power of the Gyrocopter, right, is that... You leave him alone, and he's so good versus any solo offlaner. Exactly. It, that, and that's just what, what this patch needs. It, you have to be picking these guys that can kind of stick around, win their lane, either contribute to their lane with mm -hmm. their supports, or be able to kind of sit, sit in it and take it solo and not die immediately to supports. Yeah, this is perfect. If they manage to successfully get this smoke gank here, uh, the pickoff on the gyrocopter, shutting down his farm, plus getting that critical experience, but... Smoke ends up getting spotted out here. Good job by Chad. They're staying right behind the tree line. Mm -hmm. It's smart. It's smart plays like that where you know the other team. You don't know the other team is there, but it's like good habits, right? Yeah. Ooh, the missed hook shot. Now they're still going to get the telekinesis into Light Strike away. They're going to try and pop, but the shallow grave comes into play. They don't even get that much. Meanwhile, the Vengeful Spirit, who's invisible, came around from behind and will be searching for the kill on Relic with the Alpacorak. They get that one. Ike's Mike smoothly gets away with the TP scroll there. The missile almost catching up to him, but North American Rejects providing the uh, the counter ganks there necessary to win the fight. Rough luck for Wheel there. They had a they had a good initiation start. They didn't miss the hook shot, which was rough. But North <laughs> had everyone except yeah. for the Dark Seer ready to. They were just rotating by to take this tower just in time, and they're like, "Oh, we have heroes to farm while we're here." Yeah, now. Convenient. I don't know, I kind of feel like Wheel, once their smoke popped, they should have maybe mm. abandoned mm. their hopes at, at going for the pickoff, but trying for it anyway, and unfortunately don't manage to get it. Sleasel, doing Sleasel things, man. Right. Sleasel's uh, very much an AFK, he, he can be very much an AFK farmer. Now, I haven't seen a whole lot of Lycan on this patch. Uh, have you ever seen a Lycan turn that into a solo crest? 
Um, I haven't. I've seen some, like, I've seen a Clinks go for it. Okay. Um, Do you think there's any point to it, or if you just really want the medallion just for the rush ability? No, I think there is, uh, there is a certain amount of point to it. The, like, kind of natural, I mean, it's so much value, right? Mm -hmm. You you pick up evasion. You don't have to buy anything extra. You're just grabbing the evasion. You right. get that for your solo quest. I think that's, that's really nice, even if you're not uh, using it as actively. But I also think that the 1800 gold stalls you up too too much. So yeah. like maybe I don't think it's something you go now. Right. Yeah. I yeah, think yeah. it's maybe you get your you finish your you finish your boots you finish your next item and then maybe you go back for the seller crest. Yeah, I think I, I would I I think the maybe the Necronomicon or BKB whatever like build mm -hmm. he chooses to go for. I think that item whichever one it is is too important to delay Agreed. up. Oh yeah. Agreed. But maybe after that uh, it might be a little bit of of nice value. Seller crest just makes rush so easy. Yeah, it really does. Uh. Okay, we got the missile Mike. going on Mike, and he's just going to DP out. He wants no part of this. Yeah. Oh, man, where was my Dazzle that used to mini-stun? No longer. One match. That's important. I, I wonder who it was. Yeah, I haven't seen... I've seen a little bit of Lycan, not a ton of Lycan. It's kind of like he... This is kind of the meta that fits him, but I think some teams just don't really have that hero on their radar. Yeah, we kind of got to, like... Everything's about team fight right now, mm -hmm. right? But the the natural, the inevitable response to mid game team fight lineups is going to be the split push right. pushing lineups, exactly. right? And that's why you know a lot of people theorize, okay, Naga Siren's going to come back and form like in May. Telekinesis onto Ush, Ix Mike, wrap it around. They do have the ice blast. It's going to clip Ush here. They're going to actually make the jump onto the Vengeful Spirit. His Vogt is going to be taken out nice and quick. Ix Mike, maybe not the pickoff they wanted, but it is something at the very least. I think that was smart though, going for the pickoff they knew. They were going to get the sure. safe pickoff. I mean, it would have been better to get the gyro, of course, but they went for the sure thing. And while you're ahead, I mean, just getting more ahead, right? You don't need that gyro pickoff as much as you just need a pickoff. Ooh, the ancient apparition. He's been picked off there in the top lane, possibly. MSS trying to get close enough, but getting uh -huh. juked around. Oh, no. He just bought his minus two. Yeah, Derp is now hiding himself next to the tree. Oh, no. He's still going to be caught by oh, MSS. Oh, no. He never got his minus. Oh, it's just sitting on the courier. So close. And now MSS Poor is actually going to get quite close to his mech. And that's going to be a critical factor. I think this is, is a huge buff, by the way, too. The the nerf to mech has actually been a big buff to certain like offlaners like Darkseer. The Undying gets a huge benefit as well, whether he's offlaner support, and that you naturally go for Guardian Greaves anyway. So, yes, it was a nerf to the mech, but it gives you more incentive for the Guardian Greaves. Exactly. So. And you're kind of you're kind of countered by mech in some ways. Mm -hmm. Like Undying is counter pretty. When the other team gets a mech, it helps them out a lot because not only does it heal up against the, you know, the mid game fighting, but it gets you up above. Of that death left threshold for the zombies as yeah. well. So even though their heroes are normally went mech, the fact that it got nerfed is not that bad as a whole because yeah. they work really well against a nerf mech as well. Mm -hmm. Now the Dark Steers mech and uh, eventual Guardian Greaves may not be so effective for this game. It all kind of depends on those ice blasts, but right. we'll see what happens here. They managed to get the ice blast on the gyrocopter with the lichen and his max, you know, over max movement speed chasing down the gyrocopter. I, I, I think the lichen was just such a perfect pickup for wheel. And they're winning the landing phase hard enough that uh, I think they've got a very, very good shot. Like, I would put them at a 75% chance to, to win this game, too just because I feel like they're in such a good position. It's yeah. not like North American rejects are, are very far behind. I mean, wheel are actually only operating on a 1500 gold lead. That's right. not much, but for me, I'm just looking at the mid game and going, I can just see how Wheel are going to be able to do so well in fights. But see what happens. Jump in. Ice Blast. They're going to go straight for Bleak first. While the call down is in good position, slows down Relic quite a bit. But Lycan is chasing it down the Gyrocopter as best he can. Can Sleasel actually get this kill? Meanwhile, Derp Derp running away. He's. Woo! That TP out. Oh, Barely. Super lucky there it wasn't another critical. We're going to watch Goody die now as he ends up going out. So what? This sounded support for support, and that's all? It looks like it. That's why you get the Sanj over the Yasha tricks. Yeah, uh, yeah. Save uh, his life there. Yep. I, I actually really like uh, Sanj over Yasha um, right now, as particularly in the Jar Cup, because all you care about is stats, right? Like, the damage out of Yasha is is very minor. All right. You've got farming you've speed. You're pretty fast. Yeah. The only thing that's good about Yasha and the Jar is the extra farming speed. I think you already farm well enough. Yeah. Nice pick off here. MSS should be going down. The Ice Blast. Uh, is it actually going to last? Yeah, it's going to last longer than the Shellgrave. So he will end up going down. Pumping in the fountain. Oh, and a good Damn. Dragon Slave there to pick off the Vengeful Spear. So they the get an extra fight. one there. Wheels rolling right along. Yeah. <laughs> 
that's going to be a bad <laughs> pun that gets repeated a lot. Yes, it is. I'm, I'm going to use that one <laughs> for tomorrow. And it can't say you're not with me. Uh -huh. I'm just going to say that I came up with it on the spot. Sure. It's a pretty low for pun. It wanna, really is. I don't know if you want to claim it. All right, they're going to go ahead and start punishing some tier twos. Can they do it? Actually, you know, yeah, the medallion is so good. That's why Solar Crest is really good for this kind of rat strategy, too, is throwing it on your wolves. Yeah, throw it, throw it on, on your wolves, creeps. throw it on the creeps. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things you could do here. Now, Chad, being the Chad he is, almost getting caught out there with the Ice Blast. Uh, no, they're not going to make that jump. Still, though, they do force some rotations down to the bottom lane, and that top lane is actually pretty far pushed in. So we we'll do have a lot of opportunities to, to get a decent amount of farm, go back, clear through their jungle, etc. I, I really don't think that they need to be too aggressive right now. If they just focus on like finishing up their Necro Book 3, getting that next Roshan, making that Midas. I mean, there's no Midases on the side of uh, North American Rejects. No. So you got the Midas advantage, you've got the jungling advantage with the Lycan. As long as you get Roshan and get your Necrobook 3, I, I think Wheel are just going to get to a point where they're kind of unstoppable about the 30 minute mark. And Derp Derp's got his Midas in his point booster too. This, this Ag's AA is going to be coming online fast and it's going to hurt. Yeah. And that just means the, the BKB from the Gyrocopter, it's... i really not sure how effective it's going to be. I almost wonder if he is... I mean, he has to go a BKB up against Alina, really right? Does. The Yule Scepter Light Strike Array is too strong, right. but... It's just going to come to an eventual point where you've got Ice Blast and Laguna Blade both being effective despite the fact you have a BKB, right? Because you know Relic. At this point, I'm expecting an Aghanim Scepter by like 30, 35 minutes. All right. The rate he's farming. A really aggressive play here by Gnar. They're going to see if they can get a pick up. They're going to see this creep camp is killed. So they're going to kind of be like, hmm, someone was just here. But I don't think they're getting anybody picked off. Yeah, maybe the Ancient Apparition, but not even that. Yeah, Meanwhile, it's down. Wheel who may have this successful smoke ink. Three men smoke forward, but nobody. <laughs> They're completely They're apart from each other. All top. <laughs> maybe Ush alone here in this middle lane who just TPs in, but as I say that, the smoke is going to run back up to top lane. Um, uh, maybe we'll see some action here. Yeah. Local pop. Fong is going to be caught out here unless he somehow. Well, he swaps himself, but right into Relic's hands instead, so. Clockwork does manage to pick up the kill. 4 to 8 now in the favor of Wheel. Man, I haven't. Ix might be playing this well. Like, they're firing all cylinders right now. He's they're actually going to be able to get the Yules here. Uh, the extra movement speed from Relic is just oh too no. much. And even if you shallow grave yourself, it doesn't matter at this point. Quickly cleaned up <laughs> by uh, Relic and Sleasel. This could get ugly fast if this keeps going because they're just going to be able to keep Roshan. Every time he's up, they're going to be able to kill it. Yep. RV has a decent way to contest it if they get a really good Dark Seer in initiation, but it's it's kind of risky for them. Yeah, I think that like North American rejects actually have to be the ones pushing aggressively. And I think it has to occur directly after the BKB because, again, I keep looking back and going, okay, if you start going later into the game, you have the pure damage nuke of the, uh, the Lina combined with the Ice Blast Aghanim's upgrade, combined with, you know, Lycan being able to just run at you. Exactly. Hell, even the Clockwork doing it, you know, a small bit of damage if he initiates onto the Gyrocopter first before the BKB. And these like, stacks I just stolen. Don't. Yeah, this is so bad. This is so very bad, because that's a way for the Gyrocopter. Like, he is the only right clicker out that's going to come for North American rejects. I think they have to force some fights even now. I don't think they can wait for the BKB. Mm -hmm. Just try and utilize the team fight advantage that they'll have ish with the, the mech Darkseer and uh, I mean just generally the vacuum combined with I mean, their AoE abilities. Yeah, Gyrocopter's at a pretty good timing right now with his Sanjin Yasha. I think like, he can do pretty well in these fights, but they gotta get a good initiation, they gotta hope Lycan isn't there, split pushing off somewhere else, and they gotta hope that AA misses his Ice Blast. Yeah. If any of those things happen instead, <laughs> Wheel has a pretty good chance of winning the fight. Yeah, they got a lot of boxes to tick on the side of North American Rejects if they hope to come away with a victory. Meanwhile, Wheel, pretty content to just keep on farming. Goody happened to have stolen Swap.
when they picked out the Vengeful Spirit. Also, Ike's Mike being able to get that really early blade mill is so critical, mm -hmm. particularly against the Gyrocopter, right? Yep. Gyrocopter and Clockwork have this uh, very weird relationship where they kind of go back and forth mm -hmm. in one countering the other. Right. Like, as a Clockwork, you don't want to fight into a Gyrocopter because he does more damage than you with Rocket Barrage can easily kill you, but if you're able to get a blade mail ahead of his BKB, then you're super effective against him. It's like that Pugna Skyrath rivalry. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'll blow you up if you use if you use your ultimate, but the Skyrath <laughs> has his blade mail. <laughs> the Pugna has worse strength gain, so mm -hmm. he's probably going down. 10,000 net worth on our Lycan, followed up by the 9,000 on the Lina. Then you have the three cores of the side of North American rejects. So Clockwork is, uh, you know, falling a little bit behind wow. in net worth, but that doesn't really mean anything, this particularly is, when you have an Ancient Apparition. This is so rough for you as a Queen of Pain when you have to go BKB first. I know yeah. it's probably the right decision, but it's never a decision you want to have to make. Yeah, I mean, usually, if, if you're just okay in the game, usually the stats from Aghanim Scepter mm -hmm. is good enough for you, but obviously against uh, Alina, the Yule Scepter Light Strike Array is just too tough right. for you, you to deal with. Yeah, you just need it to actually be able to put out put out your spells in the fights. And Relic already with the Aghanim Scepter. So, Quab goes for the BKB and... Jeez. Tough luck. I'm sorry, <laughs> what did like I say? 30 minutes that I thought we'd see an Aghanim yeah, Scepter? 21. But I, I kind of expected the Blink Dagger for, for Relic, but now they've caught Korok. And trying to blow him up there, the uh, Aghanim Scepter is not going to be able enough to take him down. Of course, 10 second BKB. But it's, I mean, it's still a 10 second BKB down. That's not the situation you wanted to be able to utilize want, that first charge. Yeah, you want to be able to use your BKB by BKBing and then going in and yeah. being able to get all your spells off and then getting out safely, not running away. <laughs> That's not what a quad wants to be doing at any point in the game. They got to keep their eyes on Roche on, as you said, Wheeler just going to snowball Roche after Roche after Roche. Mm -hmm. And they can keep this constant vision of him with good, uh, with good uh, wolf management. Look at Tough Renar. The big way that they can come back, I think, is like you said, they still they still kind of can take team fights if they're in a group and they get a good initi initiation. That's really their only chance. Because and getting, getting ice blasted as you go to push a tower is not a good way to start. It's, yeah, it's so hard for Navi because what do you do? They get dragon slaved, ice blast, rocket flares. I mean, you can mech up, but you you have to back up away from the tower. And, and wait for the Ice Blast to run out before you can push in again. This is their best opportunity to take this Tier 1 tower as well. Ice Blast is down. We all have a lot of win conditions this game. There's a lot of ways that if they succeed in that category, they'll win the game. Like, if they split push better, they're going to win the game. If they yeah. control rush for the rest of the game, they'll probably win. If they fight and, and just execute better in fights than Narvi, they're going to win the game. So it's just about them... I think just executing well and not making stupid mistakes. Mike he actually turns around, throws out the hook shot, pushes them back with the clocks. Now he does get backing back over Ush. Let's take the Laguna Blade. Looks like Mike may survive here. The Shadow Strike taking him down. Sleasel is coming in hot. He's actually looking to be able to get anybody, but they're all TPing away. Looks like Chad is going to be the first to fall as Bleak. Unable to TP out as quickly as his allies. And of course, he's so squishy. They get an aggressive ward up. TP out with eventual spirit, but... North American Rejects do not claim that Tier 1 tower, which is pretty critical for helping them control the Roshan pit. Yeah, we saw there. It's, just, it's so hard for them to fight into all of this. So difficult. They just get blown. I mean, Gyro pops BKB. Or, I mean, pop, pops her BKB, gets blown up. She has a hard time staying around. Mm -hmm. Clockwork did a great job there. He even got initiated on, but was able to get away with the cogs and stay safe. Even got out of the uh, call down AoE before it even hit him. So. Yep. Let's see if Relic can get a pick off here on the Ush. So BKB for the Gyrocopter next, which is pretty expected. I I mean, once they have that one, Relic is really on the it, hunt spidey, here. Uh, Ush's spidey senses are tingling right now. Uh, oh, man. Ush, a very lucky man to be alive here. <laughs> <laughs> is that a preemptive pop the ro rocket barrage to, you know, just in case he happens to come in around the corner and... <laughs> He'll take that instant rocket barrage damage to the face. Smart play, Splash. He's realizing that if he dies, if he would have died there, then the insurmount, the almost insurmountable lead, it almost becomes insurmountable. Four staff for four staff. Two offlaners. Bit of a difference in their farm, but with Clockwork still being able to kind of keep up with the uh, utility pick of MSS. I thought he was really going to be finishing up that Glimmer Cape first. I mean, he got the cloak. I, I thought that was... 
the that he was planning on going for just to be able to help out some of his allies and yeah i feel like they might need that a lot this game that four staff obviously kind of essential against and Arby, they're in good position here to contest this volume, even though if they can. Yeah. Probably, I think they have to. I think they have to try. I, I agree. I mean, they just have too much good AoE, but they can't even get it fast enough, and they're not even going to be able to get, like, the entrance there. No. They have to back themselves. Oh, no, this swap goes in. They're going to go for Relic here. The Yule Scepter dodge. Nice dodge of the Magic Missile. Meanwhile, our is going to be the first target of all the creeps coming out from Sleasel. He throws the Wolves, the Necronomicon minions, everything at that Dazzle. And in the end... They do kind of win the fight solely oh, no, because. Chad. Oh god. The Necromanians? <laughs> so close. But in the end, I mean, they win the fight simply because they get Roshan and don't lose anything for it. So. Right. Just really, really good game plan coming from Will. They, they pretty much executed all of their plans so far. And that Aghanim Scepter is done. Oh dear. Dear Korak. The Ice Blast is coming up in a second. He could actually kill Korok. Oh, oh. Ray, Ray blinked the timer by Korok. Korok is so good at those outplays, man. Yep. So good. He really needed that gold, too. That was a killing spree. He got 634 gold for that kill. Yeah, and I, I was just about to ask you, what do you think he goes for with the, you know, at the time, it was like 3.5k, now he's sitting at 4k gold. I mean, oh, and then Ush falls to the Lena. Oh, no. Jeez. That's a very bad pickoff that'll probably allow Wheel to be able to take down this tier 2 tower. He yeah, has buyback, but he really doesn't want to burn it for a tier 2 no. tower. And Wheel, knowing that, are probably just going to push the advantage. It is an Orchid. Okay. I mean, I mean you're facing up against a Yule Lina, uh, a Lycan who can potentially not care at all about the, the Orchid pickup. You know, if he's already popped his ultimate, who cares? The Clockworks, yeah, I mean, he's got Blade Mail, so he doesn't particularly care if he gets jumped on and, and Orchid up. He just pops Blade Mail and, and this tower is just, just as much damage. Bye -bye. <laughs> wow. Ten seconds, the Gyrocopter is okay. up, but it may be too late. The Melee Rex is going to end and up falling. And Fox's dead. Here. This is an Axe. Yep. Ice Blast, he's dead in the fountain. There's nothing he could do. The only thing he'd hope to do is just YOLO in there and try and go for a swap or something. But that's wheel. I mean, one mistake, one pickoff, and it's going to happen a lot mm. with Alina uh, and potentially with the Ancient Apparition Clockwork combination. There's so many different things that, that wheel can do here. One pickoff, and they just take so much for it because yeah. that's the power of a lichen. Exactly. Narvi's just going to have to get some really inventive smokes going on here if they want to get back into it. Yeah, certainly. Scriff, how many, how many smokes do they actually have up? on the side of uh, North American Rejects. They may not even have an option. Looks like one. Oh, good, he's going to be picked. Oh, Glimmer Cape actually dodges the rest there. What an item. That, yeah. That item. And Rubik is... I mean, they already have that natural magic resistance thanks, oh, to, yeah. thanks to his aura. Then you throw in a Glimmer, Glimmer Cape on top of that. Literally taking no damage. Literally no damage, man. Our clockwork's going to go for an Aghanim Scepter. Pretty standard stuff. The mm -hmm. kind of utility focus clockwork. Have you seen clocks do anything besides force blade mail axe? I feel like that's... Yeah. It's almost like the most static build of almost any hero in Dota. Like, I, it used to be a lot more change up -y. Like, you might go for a couple of different things, but it's almost exclusively blade mail force staff to start. And yeah. then axe if you're winning. Yeah, I, I think if you don't have a good start, you forego the blade mail, and you still get force staff axe. Right. But... You know, if you have a good start, you get the blade mail early before the BKBs are up, you become a much bigger threat, and then you can go into that utility force agonims after that. It's just it's just too good. Being able to jump in, hook shot, cog somebody back, force staff yourself out, and go in again. Like you can usually guaranteed get two of those kind of hook shots per team fight. Yep. And you can be a little over aggressive too, because you can hook shot hook shot yourself back to safety if yeah. you got an ally or some creeps nearby. All right, the next push out from Wheel. Slowly but surely taking down this Tier 3 tower. Just with the uh, long range of the Lina, as well as the Wolves. Looks like uh, they wanted to go for a swap there from Fogged, but couldn't even get in range. Level 1 swap. And there it is, Relic, managing to take down the tower all by himself. Nice blast. Oh, clips on two. I'm not sure if that's enough for Wheel to want to high ground this. It's just enough to make it where Navi can't really chase him out of the base. Oh, no, maybe I'm wrong. I think maybe they just, like, chip down the range racks, but... Oh, they're going to go melee instead. Relic's working on that range racks, at least. 
I think what they really want to do is swap on the clockwork. Not sure if that's the one they wanted. The old bounce back there. Font, he's probably going to be popped. MSS, actually, they hold it. Sleeze doing a good job trying to beat him down. We'll be able to get that kill. In the background, we have our second life for Relic coming out, but he's being chased away by both Ush and Korok. Ix might go for the TPL, unable to make it. Ice Blast comes in, clips Ush after the Laguna Blade, and he's going to end up going down. That was so close to being a near perfect fight for North American Rejects, but they lose Ush there at the last second. All thanks to that Aghanim Scepter Laguna Blade going off right before the lean ends up going down. Man, thank goodness they got that kill on Ash. Otherwise, that would have been a disaster for Wheel. There's no reason yeah. why they should lose a fight there. Yeah, I mean, that was them going in with uh, an Aegis on a, on a lean like that. Mm -hmm. I think after after that uh, first Ice Blast didn't catch as many as they wanted to, they probably should have waited for the next Ice Blast to go off cooldown before they really high ground. But they, they weren't really committing that hard. I don't think they were expecting... Core, uh, Fog to really go for that swap. That yeah, I mean, he swapped, aggressive he swapped swap. the clockwork, man. Like, yeah. you you don't swap a clockwork unless Not it's normally. like a, a, a clean pickoff or it's like, okay, we have to force a fight. And I think yeah. North American Rejects, that's the kind of mindset they were in. Ice Blast is down. We have to force a, a, a fight here. Okay. Otherwise, we're just going to get chipped away or there's going to be a better Ice Blast that, you know, they end up going in on us. Exactly. So, was that a pipe pickup for the Darkseer to try and counteract the uh, Ancient Apparition? So, that'll help out quite a bit. They have a medallion coming in for the Eventual Spirits, Eventual Solar Crest, and now our, our uh, Gyrocopter. W where do you go from here? Like, do you go Scotty next item? Oh, uh, God. I, I guess. Uh, I'm not I don't, really I don't sure think Manta's sense. really going to be that strong I mean, for you. No, I mean, you can... <laughs> Unless you're super good at dodging Light Strike or Ace yeah, with Manta, you can but... Yeah, dodge Light Strike, that's really the only thing that... Yeah, I don't think any pro is, is confident. Scotty's not the best pro to deal with the AA ulti is just to get HP. Yeah. But it's just, it, there's not, a, there's not a, pro, like a preferable build here, I don't think. Yeah, I would agree. Gem now, luxury items flowing in for the supports. Uh, Derp Derp is so happy. He's like, what else do I really need, man? <laughs> I can buy the gem, no problem. Start limiting the vision. MSS with that four staff will be able to get himself ahead of that light strike ray. And no, actually gets hit by Ice Mike, locked inside the cogs, doesn't have that four staff anymore. That was supposed to be one of the ways he would deal with the uh, the cogs from Mike's Mike, but and Wheels got a, they've got a creep wave, they've got the darker down back. They're going to finish up these racks here, and I don't think much that RV2 can do to stop it. No, I really don't think. 9 to 14. 33 minutes in in this game, two between North American Rejects and Wheel. They already provided the upset in game number one and are on the cusp of being able to provide a second upset against one of the favorite teams of this American qualifier. Relic gets swapped in. Hit by the Sonic Wave there. Brock kind of low, but the Ice Blast is there to back him up. They have another four staff Glimmer Cape, and Relic gets out. The BKBs popped from North American Rejects, and Wheel, very happy with that exchange, I think. They just forced, I mean, if the Lycan hadn't popped his ultimate, that would have been like the most ideal scenario. They forced BKBs. That being said, they may not push in solely because, hey, we don't have Ice Blast yet. Man, Darkseer is getting back up. We don't have the, the, the Lycan ultimate. The Ice Blast, once again, just wasn't, just didn't clip enough for yeah. them to really take that fight. I think the, the execution is still a little bit lacking for Wheel in these team fights. We saw from the last one to this one, they're kind of getting taken advantage of by these like really aggressive swaps that they're not expecting, and then they're just not really hitting their spells afterwards. Yeah. If they keep doing this, it's I still see I still think they're very much the favorite, but they've they've really got to you know put the nail in the coffin here and really execute to finish these fights off. Yeah, I think North American Reject biggest time to shine was like the um, maybe 25 to the 35 minute marker mm -hmm. in team fights. They were far enough behind that they couldn't really do that. Right. The next time I think is like super late game. Right. And it's uh, obviously not that good versus, you know, Lycan's very good at split pushing. You've got some pretty good heroes for late game on the side of Wheel and the Ancient Apparition and even the Lena's pretty legit. And Korok's real tired right. of this Yules. He picked up a Lincoln Sphere. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's some serious hate right there. And so, for, so will Gyro. So not even a Scotty, not a Manta, but wow. another Lincoln's. Makes sense. Yeah, it's just very odd. I mean... I mean, that's how I, all these initiations are going. That's why not really able to get these fights to the, the swap into immediate Yules. Mm -hmm. So... We'll see how it could go for you, Wheel. 
Thanks, Mike, trying to finish up that Aghanim Scepter. And North American Rejects are actually getting some map control. They're pushing out the top lane. They're over the river in middle lane. This long rush bond really helping them out as well. Yeah, it certainly is. If they can win a fight here, that'll probably mean they take control of the Roshan pit. Would that be Cheese? Is that going to be our third Roshan or yes. just second one? Yeah, uh, it will be third. Yeah. Lycan, man. <laughs> Roshans always go down so quickly. I think I think you got BKB here, and then you have to think about upgrading that Silver Crest, maybe. Maybe. Missed hook shot? I think um, Basher is going to be pretty necessary for a Lycan yeah. after the BKB. LSA lands on uh, Bleak, the swap out, and nice save there from Font. He may actually get out. Nope, the counter Good swap. swap from Goody. Goody. Showing off some moves on that Rubik. And now it's time for Wheel to be the aggressors. They know Roshan has to be up here mm, in the next 30 that. seconds. So. A little over. Oh, yeah, it's shorter. I was thinking, man, the 12 o'clock clock, it's not. <laughs> Yeah, you're talking about that little bit of gap, right? Yeah, why is it even there? It's never used. Yeah, it's it really 11 shouldn't. minutes max. Yeah. Just using an 11 minute clock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, call down, revealing that yes, indeed, we are going to try and do Roshan here, but I don't think we're hey. it. they just kill it so fast. Yeah. And they already blew call down. It wasn't really effective for them, so. Looks like they're just going to give it up. Maybe a pick off on the Ancient Apparition here. No, TPM, he's good. Super safe play. So, oh, what a vacuum! This would be exactly what they need. Evan was all up there. They are able to force Daft's Lethal down, but Relic is going to be picked off. Goody managed to stop that TP. Ice Blast over the top manages to hit four there on the side of North American Reject. Ice Ice makes the reinitiation, gets Korok, but managed to blink out. Sleasel locked out of this fight and entirely. In the and the lag. Oh, oh, the server, please. Mercy, what a play from MSS, though. I mean, we're, I think we're both feeling very pessimist about this game for North American Rejects and this fight in particular, but leading with the vacuum like that is exactly what that you was need. So good. Forcing, the t forcing the TP out from the AA made them know that they had the numbers to take the fight, and they went right after it. And a great vacuum there. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I don't know. It almost seems like the... Forcing the Ancient Apparition back to base did allow him to get this big Ice Blast that That's hits true. on four. I'm, I'm a bit concerned that the Lycan is locked out. I, I think Ix Mike, that jump in, may have just cost them something big. So Lisa's just going to abandon here. They managed to get the Aegis. Ix Mike going to end up falling here. Maybe if, if Ix Mike had some sort of better cog setup, Sleasel goes in with a, the wolf form and at, right. actually tries to contest Roshan to go for that Aegis. But because of that, he couldn't go for the, the Aegis, and there's no contest at that point. We've got ourselves a ball game. We really do. 12 to 15, big upset here. As uh, that once upon a time, 10,000 gold lead for Wheel is now rapidly climbing up to the zero marker. Another Ice Blast going to come in, but Tier 2 will fall nonetheless. See, I will, like, like I was saying before, they've got this lead, but they're really having a hard time executing this, these large team fights. And that's where Narvi's experience as a team and experience as individual players is really showing itself. Yeah, absolutely. They, the, the aggressiveness, the swaps, I think, has deterred Wheel two different times now when they try to push uphill, and all of a sudden, one great team fight, and now they're going to be able to go uphill, potentially go for the pickoffs, but Goody, Glimmer Cape, still super effective. Again. And the swap steals, man. Goody is all over them. Call down. They really want to force this one. They're going to make the reinitiation. Sleasel gets a force down push away. Has the ultimate form popped. But he's going to be controlled by that magic missile. Ush, meanwhile, hitting the Raxes while also sending those flat cannon shots to hit the rest of the wheel members. They will be able to take this one building out, but are wheel going to be able to catch anybody here? Telekinesis managed to grab MSS. Pulls him back. Relic trying to get that Yule Scepter on somebody, but those Lincolns being able to protect him. Swap is still up. Goody looking for it, thinking about it, but not on Korok, he says. Bit too dangerous. Try and go for that blinker. So they get a melee racks. They even out something here. They now have the advantage in this bottom lane. They do. And these creeps have been pushing in for a while. They've been getting some chip damage on these T4s. But I don't think I don't think Nar cares that much about that. No. Honestly. I mean, not. Con I mean, considering how much they gained during that period of time. I mean, if if they lose this game, it'll be because they lose a team fight, not because of a base race or anything of that nature. Yeah. I don't think. I think that Narvi realizes that that's their strength right now. They can't try to you know outright the like it. So Sleasel sitting on 3,300 gold. His item 
probably going to have to be BKB. Yeah, that's what I would like to see. And it just feels like there's just a little bit... Man, I wasn't missing Missile. Uh, like, I felt like he was at a good point to just go in, but... Just the one Magic Missile kind of put a uh, halt to those tracks, you know? Yeah, it's too much control for him. But the BKB obviously help out. Gyrocopter is still a lot of magic damage out from him. Same goes with the uh, the Queen of Pain. You've got the Vacuum Factor as well. Do not want to be caught in that. Uh, Queen of Pain may be able to get the Sight the Vice, another factor. That is going to play into a uh, BKB choice for Lycan. What's, the, what's astounding to me is how Narvi's been able to keep up their farm despite being behind for so long in that middle game. Yeah, absolutely. Like both, they have two heroes on the top of net worth. Thing. Oh, we popped the Lincoln's there. We'll be able to get the slot, but Goody, uh-oh. May not want to do that one. Laguna Blade popped on Ush, but he managed to heal himself up thanks to the cheese, backs himself out, and we'll be able to get away from that fight. The rest of the team will wheel the search in for the snipe out. Nice blast only connects with Korok, though. BKB and cheese usage, that's that's not bad. Yeah. Goody, I think, doing a fantastic job. Five seconds left now on that BKB. Down to the bare minimum. Which means Ike's Mike may actually become uh, a bigger factor now against that gyrocopter with only five seconds on that charge and soon to be a Zaganim Scepter. It has a BKB. Yeah, Good there's pickup. Pretty necessary. Do you think Basher is the next item for him to just try and lock down? I mean, it's good to the Queen of Pain. If you have an Abyssal Blade, you can lock her down right away. And then the Gyrocopter as well. I mean, you may be super fast on the Lycan, but just a little bit of control and like also the movement speed of the Gyrocopter. He's not going to get ahead of you entirely. He's still going to be taking some damage, but just keeping that mobility up is going to help you mitigate some of the extra hits from the Lycan. And this will be enough to make him back off. That's not quite... Well, now he's going to go for it here. Ush, he really wants this tower. And they're going to... Are they going to engage on after? Ush still moving forward. He's really confident right now. Yeah, I think he's, he feels so much confidence because of that Lincoln's. Mm. That, that pickup allows him... Because what are they going to do at that point? Like, the most they could do is initiate with the clockwork and then maybe follow that up, right? Fate will to pop the Lincoln's. Telekinesis to actually get the disable or something like that, but that would right. be a, a heavy amount of commitment. And then you have the counter from North American Rejects, which is going to be, you know, coming in with the Dark Seer, being able to get that vacuum and wall. Right. And now they know that the Lena has been bottom still pushing a bit. Shiva is going to be up soon on our Dark Seer. That's going to be another very significant pickup, I feel. The increase in armor is going to be big. Obviously, slowing down some of these attacks. Yep, another Glimmer Cape coming up as well. Butter and the Gyrocopter on its way. That's another huge factor against the Lycan, which may mean the Lycan has to go now on MKB rather than the lockdown of Abyssal. Rough times for Wheel. They had such a big advantage, but... Execution, man. It's just, it really came down to really good execution from Narvi in all these fights. Like, they're on the back foot for all those fights coming into their base, but they made the right decisions at the right times. And now, what do you do? Wait out the next Roshan Ix Mike having a peek inside the enemy base here. Looks like he wants to try and sneak in a quick range racks, perhaps, with the surprise jump here the back door protection should be down oh, no, that TP's okay he might just get the dazzle though maybe a pick off there no it's a bit risky right inside the base it against is. a dazzle who can guarantee an extra five seconds through shallow grave and if you trade yourself away just for a support it's not going to be worth it for ix mike no not at all croc he's looking for a pick off here i don't know if he can kill sleasel though especially with his bkb the best he could probably hope for is to force out a BKB and get away, but he's got no help rotating for him either, so maybe he's just he's sticking just, around here to get the, the split push options. Yeah, he's just kind of keeping, keeping intelligence up basically about what's going on in this top lane. See bottom wheel are clearing through some of the jungle. Got to be backing up now. What's the next item for us here? Uh, so I was thinking about um, whether or not the Satanic is going to be a possibility. Mm -hmm. It's It can still be strong, right? The raw amount of HP is going to be decent. The The problem is going to be your whether or not you want to go for that item when the Ice Blast is going to counter out your lifesteal right. so heavily. That being said, I'm not sure what... I mean, you could... What does he have right now? Can we get a double check? 
I think you then uh, maybe maybe MKB, but there's not like I mean a lot of guys will play MKB even when there's not a butterfly yeah. on the enemy team. I, I feel like that that may leave you just a bit too squishy though. Yeah. You still have to deal with the ice blast Aghanim scepter yeah. with uh, Laguna Blade from Wheel. You you got to make sure your gyrocopter isn't like out before he gets any flat cannon shots up. So I I would prefer something a little bit more stat based. Scotty or or, or Satanic would be um, my ideals, but he does have a lot of extra survivability thanks to this pipe pickup. And another ice blast that just doesn't hit on enough heroes. And that's gonna be go time for North American Rejects to push uphill while the ice blast is down. And they could just keep glimmering us here. Tier 3 does end up going down here. Ash quick to back himself up, though. Oh, does, does Vinch have her Glimmer Cape yet? I know there was a Shadow Blade, yeah. Okay. I thought I saw him Glimmer, but he just kept attacking, so he never actually faded out. But he yeah. saw, had the little purpley, glowy stuff. And the double support is there. The, uh, the soon to be Lord Quest, I'm sure, from Chill Spirit is the next item, plus Glimmer Cape. It just makes the high grounding so much easier, even yeah. when you don't have a natural high ground. All right, the push forward. Oops, swap there, but Relic does have the Lincoln, so... Swap not going to be effective. They start working on that melee rack. Ix Mike, oh, oh blocked no. out there by Goody. Going for the telekinesis, but Ush pushes forward there. Goody almost dying, but managed to get the glimmer cape and will survive the melee racks. Meanwhile, they glyphed David and are now looking for that reinitiation. But Sleasel having to pop that true form means that North American rejects can sit back and just wait it out. Wheel are just choking a bit here with their execution. Like that's that's a situation that never really should happen. Like you've got to be able to communicate. Oh, now the jump now. in from Mike's Mike with the ice blast over the top and the vacuum though. It's counter initiation. Ush managed to get some distance away there, surviving through the Laguna Blade, not taking much extra damage, and they can now push forward. Korok actually going for the site device. Good swap, defensive swap from Goody. He's going to oh. dive for flat cannon shots. Too much for him to handle. And with that, mid lane of Rax down, North American Rejects doesn't look like they're stopping for a beat here. They're going to go straight up to that top lane, work on that tier three before we'll have the chance to recover. Ix Mike just trying to buy time here, push back with the cogs, but oh, oh pulled over by the vacuum. Man. And now the BKB activated by Ush ensures the kill. Sleasel pops his ultimate finally, going for Ush, but there's enough defense on the side of North American Rejects again. Perhaps just waiting out the like in form. No, they're going to keep pushing forward no matter what. Ush. Ice Blast will clip him here, but Sleasel, I mean, with that ultimate down soon, I don't know how they could possibly win the fight without having that uh, max movement speed. Glimmer Cape's so nice about not making you take a lot of damage from that AA ult either. Yeah, very convenient. High Pebble out quite a bit, Light Strike Array, lands on Ush, but he gets a Shell Grave just in case. The Laguna Blade was thrown out, but it was not. 14 to 15, now we just have that one last Rax left. It's in the bottom lane, and they're gonna go for it. If they want to, actually they could back up and do Roshan, but I... Think, I, I think they're a little low considering we almost have all their ultimates back up. Yeah, that Lycan ultimate's gotta be coming up here. And yeah. yeah, just right now, so... They can go for it. I mean, they're they're just out executing. Yeah. They were they were down this entire game until the last five minutes or so. And it's a range racks too. You could just chip it away yeah, real quickly. Just, yeah. Just glimmer cape. Do they have range racks left in the middle lane? They do. Oh no, no they don't. Gone. Okay, okay, that's. They just for some reason, I thought I saw it. It's probably a lot safer to just go ahead and get this rush four if they spotted yeah. it out. He just and cheese available for North American. And the Rejects, desolator for the Lena. I mean, you got to get some physical is, damage out now. I There's just too a, much magic resistance. I think this Lena wants right. to ride a little bit. I mean, this is the right idea. I think uh, you got to get some some serious like. Upset to jump in. They actually are able to grab the uh, Dazzle. It's not a, the most insane pickoff, but it's something. It's and, oh, no, look at the rat there. They have the Queen of Pain going for the Ranger Axe, and he gets it. Oh, no. man. They lost a Dazzle, but they gained Mega Creeps for it. 49 minutes in, and now we'll have to go all in with this Aegis and Cheese. There's not many other options. Ike's Mike looks like he jumped onto Korok there, but obviously the blink away gets him out. And we'll... I mean, they don't have the kind of team that can deal with Mega Creeps for very long. No, they do not have very good Creep player either. Oh, this is just, this is really tough. I mean, I think that was the right play from Wheel. That was just fantastic play from Korok to know that they were going to be going for that Roche and just being there to take it out fast. Yeah, the mobility of the Quap, able to quickly get into the base like that. And we'll see the boots travel coming out from Lycan, so 
Yeah, th- don't. Time for the YOLO play. Yeah, it's got to be some of these YOLO plays, man. Otherwise, yeah, coming back from Mega Creeps is a once every couple years, no, not a couple times every year type of situation mm-hmm. that you come back from. So, and usually it's like directly after. You get mega creeped, but you immediately push in. Exactly. Very rarely do you see a, a team actually manage to, to come back after like two minutes after they've been yeah. mega creeped. I it, think it's like two or three times in the history of Dota 2 that yeah. this came back from like five minutes or longer of mega creeps. Yeah, that was the ridiculous Cloud9 game. Mm hmm. Stretched out for a billion years. God, fighting mega creeps from that long, I would just. That's the kind of stuff that gives you nightmares, man. I hate I hate being a support at the end of the game having to clear Mega Creep waves. Yeah. It takes you so much effort you don't uh. even get that much gold. Nope. <laughs> Just like, why? <laughs> All right, Guardian Greaves, Shiva's Pipe, Four Staff, MSS is loaded a bear here, and same goes with the Gyrocopter. He is six slotted. Maybe not the final items. Trade in, jump in, Yule Scepter, they're going to go for us, but the BKB active, call down, going to be laced on Relic. It's going to be the first to fall there, Gyrocopter flank and it takes out the Rubik. Ix Mike going to go down to Ush next, Sleasel, who is trying to go for the supports in the back, unable to do even that. Relic with a buyback, Sleasel going to be swapped back in and right click down, there goes that Aegis, Relic goes down a secondary time, and Sleasel, no ultimate, not going to be able to do anything about this. He'll die a second time as well. Korok ends this game on a godlike spree, and we now have a one to one. So it started off looking so good there for Wheel. Yeah. A clean 2 0 well would have been a huge upset, but they managed to hold on, and we'll make it a 1 1. The first 30 minutes of that game, they played so well, and then just three bad fights in a row where they just they got initiated on when they weren't expecting it, didn't mm -hmm. react correctly. And what was amazing for many hours, they kind of kept their cool. And yeah. when. when we all made a mistake. They smelled blood on the water and went for it immediately. Like when they, when they caught the A out and he had to TP back, they immediately went into Roche.